I'm Susanna Scorcia. I'm 22 years old. Today is October 7th, 2020. <laughs> I have 1,447 Instagram followers. So, took me a sec to find it. Uh, it's a modeling picture of me working with Let's shoot, shoot Sarah Still Frames and Stilettos. It was a boudoir shoot that I did a few years back with an amazing photographer. It's got 470 likes. Well, I'm new. <laughs> I'm very, very new, so my uh, connection is a little limited, but I went to college with the founders and uh, got to collaborate with them and get to know them, especially Logan. And over the years, me and Logan have bounced many ideas off of each other for acting and, and writing. And I got to collaborate with them a few times and very much grew to respect all of them. So my Though my connection is very limited, I'm very lucky to be a part of a group of people who are constantly collaborating. When I started in acting and modeling, I didn't really know how to go about it. And I think after a lot of trial and error, I slowly learned that if you want to start, you know, really working your way through the business, you had to have to start organizing things on your own. And so if you're not getting cast in things, you have to start pitching and, and writing and networking. And so being a part of Black Wolves is an opportunity to, to constantly be creating and bouncing ideas off of people. So if I'm not getting cast, I can at least still, you know, be a part of the game and keeping myself busy and, you know, working. I got to do a script reading with them a few months back and I got to play a part in it that was kind of important to the integrity of the movie. It was, it was kind of a big part which is really exciting. I haven't sat in that room in a while where you get to read a script with people and then I hadn't sat in the room with those exact people like I had in college so it was a lot of fun. Okay, I wouldn't... <laughs> This isn't exactly my career because I wasn't technically supposed to be there, but um, my senior year of college, I snuck onto the Spider-Man Far From Home set in Manhattan because I was at my internship and I, I just wandered onto set and uh, I got to see them filming in Manhattan and then I texted one of my buddies who was in the film and he invited me to set the next day so I got to meet Tom Holland and, and Zendaya and Jacob Batalon and the director John Watts and Kevin Feige sat down next to me and I didn't know how to talk to him so I didn't but I, I kind of count that as my career because <laughs> I got to be on a Marvel set. <laughs> Most important thing to me right now is being in a constant state of fun. I think when the quarantine hit Everybody was trying to get a hold of their life a little bit. Maybe not in the first few weeks, but a little bit later in. And so I was like, oh, I should exercise more. I should learn how to cook. I should have no excuse not to learn Italian. I should be auditioning more, networking more. You know, uh, everything started to just pile up a little bit. And I think that when you get that overwhelmed, you start to take life too seriously. And so I wanted to take a step back and, and you know, try to focus on all of the fun things that go into everything that you do. I like journaling. I like exercising. I like acting. And if you take it too seriously and it becomes work or an obligation, your life kind of becomes a little miserable. So uh, I think the most important thing to me is just reminding myself that you're not doing it unless you're trying to have fun. My favorite movie is Titanic, Catch Me If You Can, The League of Their Own, Social Network, Remember the Titans, like movies about life. Also Back to the Future and Avengers Endgame and Infinity War. Cause you never know, it could happen. <laughs> I like purple, <laughs> sometimes black, I like yellow, <laughs> but 
Purple's pretty. Ugh, yeah, did you not hear my whole speech about having fun? <laughs> yes, I, I feel a ton of pressure. I think I'm constantly trying to complete so many different tasks at once. Like auditioning, I hate auditioning. Auditioning is not fun. It is the worst part about being in this industry. It's basically like every week you go on like five job interviews and you get like five to ten minutes to win people over with your talent and personality and it really stresses me out and so a lot of pressure in quarantine has been about learning how to master this perfect audition um, which is a lot harder when you're doing self tapes. You think it's it's not harder it's like I don't know I guess it's kind of easier because you get to start over whenever you want but there's it's just there's been a lot of pressure. Pressure in life with, you know, figuring stuff out with your mental health and your physical health and your dental health. People forget about that, but you gotta take care of it. And uh, <laughs> taking care of your career and then taking care of your family relationships. So much pressure. Are you ready for a list? I can't stand people who drive loud cars. Why do you have a loud car? You don't need it to be loud. And it sounds the same as a broken old car. You don't need to have one. It's just loud. So that I don't, it's a pet peeve of mine when people crack their knuckles in the middle of like a meeting. Like you ever sit with somebody and they're like, they're like excuse me. Like you ever, I can't. So I don't like that either. Um, pet peeves. Oh, I, I guess I don't like when, when people say that you're, they accuse you of lying when you're telling the truth. I could do a whole interview about my pet peeves. I'll just leave it to those. <laughs> I might just give myself a hug. <laughs> give yourself a break. Learn to have more fun. You're going to be talking about it a lot a year from now. <laughs> I performed with Al Pacino, kind of. I was an extra in the movie Paterno and I got to stand five feet from him. That counts, that counts, it was Al Pacino, it counts. Paul Rudd, I love Paul Rudd. I love that he's an actor that can jump from comedy to um, drama. If you play like Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, swap Kevin Bacon out for Paul Rudd because he's been in everything. He was on Friends. He was in Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio. He was in the MCU. He's in Anchorman. This is 40, Knocked Up. He's just been everywhere. So him, Steve Carell too. Steve Carell is one of those actors that can also do comedy and drama really well. Also Leonardo DiCaprio. He owns my heart. Allison Janney, she's a badass. Mandy Moore, Margot Robbie, all of them. Can I work with all of them? <laughs> all of them, but Paul Rudd. Well, I grew up loving this show, Scrubs. It is my family's Bible. We communicate in Scrubs quotes. Every time we start dating somebody, somebody in the family, we like induct them into the family by making them watch the show with us as we quote the entire show. And the Scrubs actors, Zach Braff and Donald Faison, have a podcast out right now where they go through every single episode and talk about what it was like to work on that episode and their audition processes and, you know, all of their stories. And they bring on the creator of the show, Bill Lawrence, and like John C. McGinley, who's an incredible actor, and they're having Ryan Reynolds on because he was on one of the shows. So I've been listening to that podcast a lot, and they collectively are my favorite artists right now. The only thing that I would say, especially in in modeling, if you're going into into modeling or acting in the beginning, there's a lot of people out there who will try to take your money and um, charge you for stuff and experiences that you don't need. Um, and, and in modeling, there are gonna be a lot of photographers out there who are scamming you and, and you know, m make you take off clothes if you're not ready and sign stuff that you haven't read. Just be careful, do the research. Um, if you're going to pay like $300 to be in a room with like a casting director, 
look up who the casting director is and if he or she has cast stuff that you like then pay it if you don't know them yes it's worth the experience and the opportunity but it's a lot of money and we are broke so just you know uh, pay attention to that stuff I think there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of little things in this industry that really get me I think for me especially I've been on a lot of sets where I was you know 18 19 20 21 and I was around uh, men who were in a position of power and kind of they said things and did things that weren't necessarily you know bad um, like if you look at it it's that the lines are blurry but the, it, it makes you uncomfortable and you feel as though you can't say anything because they hired you or you're working for them or more importantly you just really want to look professional and you want to make it look like you know you can say yes to anything because you're new in the industry and if you speak back you're there it's just so quick somebody can be like oh she's difficult to work with or she's not a team player and i like that the the me too movement is kind of or had and is continuing to shine some light on all of that but it's still a big problem and i would i would like to see that in the future uh get taken care of a little bit better and i think it's not even on the the young actresses or actors male or female in that position because Yes, you should speak up for yourself, but it's scary. I think that it's uh, important for people who have been in the industry for a while, if they see something, to just be like, hey, like, come on. Like, that's not right. So that's really important to me. Spotify. Yeah, <laughs> Spotify for, for my music and my podcasts or Twitter. waking up on time <laughs> my sleep schedule is so bad i go to bed at anywhere between 1 a.m and 7 a.m and i wake up anywhere between 10 and noon and the days are about to get shorter and i don't want to lose all of that sunlight <laughs> so that <laughs> and getting auditions because there's not much happening right now but m mostly the sleep thing I received a blank check. Well, I keep some of it for myself. I'd buy my mother some stuff, like an RV, so she can, she really wants an RV, so she can travel. I'd take care of my family. Uh, I would want to donate it to some charities. My father was really big on donating to charities constantly, so I would want to do that too. It's got so much. This is such a like a loaded question. I feel like a pressure to to make sure I don't leave out homelessness and world hunger. Not because I feel like I have to, but because I'd hope that if I got a check, I would do that. Honestly, I hope that I hope that that's one of the first things that I would do is help others. Um, and I also think that I would I would go to like Fiji or like Greece, you know. So, <laughs> I, I would do stuff for me and for others. My Instagram is at Susanna with a Z underscore Rose with two E's. Follow me. DM me. Let's be friends. It's quarantine. Not, not many people to talk to. <laughs> that, that's it. I don't, I don't, you can follow me on anywhere else. It's usually under the same name. But yeah, let's be friends.